the eyes of a traveler. Hello world. So, we're back. This is a journey, a difficult journey. One where I came off my bike seven times. Six in trying to reach the pinnacle, the final destination. And once on my return leg. Though this journey was really, really tough, it was something I had to do on a personal level. So there's a story behind this, and if I may, I'd like to share the story in its shortest form. So, when you get older, you always want to know whether you still have it in you to do the things you did when you wore a younger man's clothes. In inquiring as to which was the hardest track that one could do in both Pakistan and Kashmir, I found that the best track, well, when I say best, I mean the hardest, the most difficult track to do was one that led to a lake called Rati Gali Lake. Now, this track is an 18 kilometer track one way, and the final two kilometers isn't really something you really want to do on a motorbike. Uh, you can hike or you can. <clears throat> Uh, ride a horse I did the latter but the track is tough and often it's done with a group so when you're in trouble there's others that can assist your bike and you in trying to get up uh, or pass the difficulty when I say get up often the difficulty stems from the incline in the track to understand how stupid and silly I am I have to tell you another story within this story and that starts with a father and son returning from the market after selling their goods they're traveling with their donkey who is now unladen and as they pass the first person on the road they hear him say what stupid people they have an empty donkey and donkey that could carry one of them and instead they're walking so the father tells the son, please take a seat on the donkey and rest your legs. As they move on, they pass another person who states under his breath, wow, look at that son. He has no respect for his father. He's sitting on the donkey whilst his father walks. So the son hears this and tells his father to sit on the donkey whilst he will walk. The next person they meet also has an opinion and that opinion is that how cruel the father is to make his son walk with his weak little legs so the father hears this and asks the son to join him on the donkey the final person that they cross mutters under his breath how cruel these two are they're going to break the back of this donkey father and son alight from the donkey and end up carrying the donkey home. Now that's the stupidity, and that's what I did. People told me that I could easily do this, no problem. Your motorbike is powerful, it can do this track. But what I didn't realize is that they didn't know, and I didn't know, that it shouldn't be done unless you're with others. So doing it on your own is very, very difficult, because when you get stuck, it's very hard to get unstuck. But anyway, you'll see in the video, I've shown a couple of my falls. I haven't shown all of them. It starts to get monotonous and painful for me to watch also. So I hope you enjoy. So the moral of the story is that don't always believe everything everyone tells you. And use your common sense, which is very important when riding a motorcycle. Because you understand your motorcycle. You understand your capabilities. Having said that, I have no regrets. The falls that I took only made me stronger and uh, doubled my resolve in trying to finish this track and seeing that I can still do it at my age, which I did. So I'm still happy, though I would say if you don't have to take a challenge on, then don't. Only if you want to take a challenge on, please do come and visit this place and try it out for yourself. Be warned, it's not easy. <laughs>
You'll notice now that the track has become a lot more difficult. The stones are bigger, and as we go through this track, it just gets worse. Uh, whilst I was regaling the stories that I did, um, the track was quite calm and collected, but now it gets difficult. And you'll find, and you'll certainly see, that I have um, real issues in trying to get up this track uh, whether I'm on the bike or off the bike. Um, so I hope uh, I hope you enjoy. From the video, it's hard to appreciate how steep this track is, but I can tell you that it's extremely st steep, and the engine, uh, both mine and the motorcycles, uh, was suffering, was huffing and puffing without really putting much power into it. Um, but uh, we did continue, and uh, the track did not forgive us one bit all the way to the end. I was informed when I got to the top that only a week ago a jeep had come off the track and uh, it was not at this part of the track but where the track gets a lot higher in altitude and unfortunately the deep jeep didn't survive nor did the people that were in it. God rest their souls. I hadn't done yet 20% of the track, but my arms were in serious pain, my bottom was sore, my back was aching. Basically, the track so far had rattled me uh, so much that uh, bones felt as though they were out of place. I took a rest just to see the view and take a little respite to collect my thoughts and catch my breath. Most tourists and travellers enter this track on the basis that they will get to the top and back by jeep. So when they see a motorcycle, especially a solo rider, they are slightly alarmed that somebody would try to take this on on their own. Obviously they're wiser than me, that's for sure. <laughs> The steepness of the track was obviously an issue. 
but also the embedded rocks, they would on occasion just stop me in my tracks and then trying to get over them was no easy feat. The truth is, this is either a positive or a negative, but this track is challenging from start to finish. So if you want a challenge, then do come this way. And if you think too many challenges would be detrimental to your health, then stick to a Jeep uh, rather than a motorcycle. Traction on this ground is non-existent. The earth has been made into powder. The wheel just doesn't grip it. And with the steepness of this bend, I'm finding it difficult to get up. But I should warn you that in this attempt, this second attempt to get up, I do fall. This will be my first fall. And it's one of those falls where I have to drop the bike because I cannot control uh, the descent when the bike rolls back, brakes are fully applied, gear is in uh, situ, but still I could not control it. So I dropped the bike to prevent myself from either hitting the rock face or worse still, falling into the river. Now you'll see how I get up and move this bike uh, back onto its two wheels and uh, get out of this difficult situation. This is exactly what I did on all seven times I fell. I would block the rear wheel with a stone because the incline is such that even with both brakes applied and the engine running with a forward force, the bike still doesn't move forward, instead rolls back. steeper than I could have ever imagined. Most motorcyclists that come here come in groups and then when these steep inclines are presented there is always one person pushing the bike whilst the rider is using the engine force to get up. I believe this was the point where the Jeep fell to its demise. Rest in peace, all those that left Earth too early. There is a balancing act 
where the mind has to concentrate on the road while still being free enough to appreciate the atmosphere, the views, nature that surrounds us. But uh, it's something that you end up doing when you travel a great deal. You have to split your concentration. You don't want to miss nature and you certainly don't want to miss the road and how you sit on it. For that could end up being a very serious pitfall. Hello Vulture, are you waiting for me to fall? <laughs> On my journey I crossed no motorcyclists, just me and my steed. I was wondering, is it because I started too late? Though this is only 18 kilometers times 2, 36, it takes hours upon hours. In fact, I believe when I totted up the journey, it was four hours one way. Are you ready for another fall? Well, I wasn't, but here it comes. Basically, in trying to get up this incline, I managed most of it, but right at the top, the motorcycle just lost speed, as well as uh, an obstacle of an embedded rock. What this meant was that it started to roll back. I applied brakes as before and kept the engine running, but it still wouldn't hold the bike. Unfortunately, I had to drop it to its side. Once again, rocks, where it lift the bike and push forward. If memory serves me correctly, on this occasion, I tried it, but it fell again. The rock at the back of the rear wheel shifted and I had to drop the bike again because it rolled further down the hill. Well, well, we live and learn. Though second fall wasn't as dramatic as the first, it did make me wonder whether I should stay on the ground for a little while to collect my thoughts and get some energy. I really was suffering from fatigue. Holding the bike over the rocks, riding in this terrain really breaks both the soul and the body. Don't get me wrong, I still wanted to complete this, but it just seemed endless and extremely relentless. But I guess all good things come to those who endeavor, and endeavor I did, onwards and upwards. It has to be said that when you ride your motorcycle and it's just you and your steed and wilderness, there is something that comes upon you, a feeling, a magical feeling, where even though the journey might be difficult, you still feel it was worthwhile. It was a journey that made you grow and it was a journey that you wouldn't want to miss it's something you definitely would do again that's what i felt at the time now looking back and knowing how difficult it was all the way to the end i'm not absolutely sure whether that hypothesis holds true but it did at the time <laughs>
I'm only joking. I would do it again. For sure. I know I was coming to an end. I'd been riding for three hours plus, and uh, I'd come to this stream, uh, brook, for want of a better description. The rocks were slippery, and there was no clear path. It wouldn't have been so difficult if it had come at the beginning of the track, but by now, my arms were tired. I was suffering from, as I said before, fatigue, and then as the stream ended, there was an incline, and it was a real incline. But with all the effort that I could muster, I tried it once and failed, again dropping the bike. But that didn't stop me, because I knew I was very close. The question was, could I get this bike up on its own momentum, or would I have to wait for somebody to come, like the jeep behind me, I tried, I picked up another rock, I placed it behind the wheel, and I thought to myself, come on, Ikram, you've got this far on your own, you need to finish this on your own. Well, I say on my own, I was with my bike, so I wasn't alone, and my maker was watching over me. You can see from the picture now, the side mirrors are all bent, the phones are all disheveled and I too was extremely out of sync but I knew I was close to the end so with a smile on my face I carried on and then I saw a blue tent and I knew I'd come to the base camp and from this point onwards the journey wouldn't be on the motorcycle but it would be either on foot or on horse and I can tell you it was on horse so this is the end of part one I will share part two very shortly um, but I wanted to show the journey in itself just the journey journey there not the final destination me and my steed and my thoughts that I share with you.